Hi, I'm Doug Porter, Chief Economist with the Bank of Montreal. Well, clearly the big event for, uh, for this month was, was the U.S. election. And I'd like to speak today about the implications of the election result for the uh, Canadian economy in particular. Now, obviously there are some mixed elements for Canada from this shocking victory by Mr. Trump. Uh, focusing first on the positive, there's no question about it that the main contour of uh, Trump's proposals was his fiscal stimulus. In other words, big tax cuts, big infrastructure spending, and we believe that a lot of that actually will get passed by Congress, especially on the tax cut front, because effectively he's pushing on an open door there with a Republican Congress. Now, these stimulus measures will likely give a short-term boost to the U.S. economy in 2017, 2018. Inevitably, that will spill over into somewhat stronger growth in Canada. However, we are not yet revising up our economic forecast either for Canada or the U.S. because there are some offsetting concerns as well. Now, I've talked about the big positive from an economic standpoint of a Trump victory. The big negative is his relentless focus on protectionism. And for Canadians and for the Canadian economy, that clearly is the biggest potential downcast from, uh, from Trump winning. Uh, the concern there, of course, is that 75% of our exports go to, uh, to the U.S., but it's not just that narrowly based. We're, we'd also be concerned about the supply chains, even what we import from the U.S. If that is at all disrupted by an increase in protectionism, that's clearly a negative for, uh, for the broader Canadian economy. And, of course, it's not just negative for Canada, it's negative for the entire global economy. Now, on that front, we just simply cannot know at this point how many of Trump's proposals will actually ever see the light of day. But one thing I can tell you is that a president does have a fair bit of power when it comes to international trade. He can impose short-term tariffs if he sees it as an emergency situation. He can also get out of certain trade deals. And we've already seen that the TPP is likely to never see the light of the day because of uh, Trump's victory. Uh, so that's, that's the big negative. And that could act as a dampener not just on Canadian growth, but on U.S. growth as well over the next, uh, the next year. The third, and it's a bit more of a mixed element thing that I'd like to talk about, is the fact that this combination of both a bit of protectionism and fiscal stimulus can lead to higher interest rates. In the early days after the election, that's certainly one feature we've seen in financial markets, a big backup in long-term interest rates and the potential for the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates even more than what the market expected in 2017 and 2018. That's already spilled over into Canadian long-term interest rates and we do think that some of this may well stick and that we'll see somewhat longer term interest rates in both Canada and the U.S. through 2017. Uh, the upshot of all these things is it does tend to put a little bit of downward pressure on the Canadian dollar. Nothing serious, but we do think the net result of this as well is to put a, a bit more downside risk to the Canadian dollar when we look out into uh, 2017. Uh, just to wrap up, overall it is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, from the tr Trump victory for Canada. Overall, we do think it slightly pushes up on things like the Canadian growth outlook and the interest rate outlook, but it slightly pushes down on the Canadian dollar outlook. That's it for this month. Thank you very much.